a Julian Assange, fundador de Wikileaks, para el cierre virtual de esta conferencia internacional de software libre en su séptima edición. Yes, of course. Uh, let me introduce uh, you. Are the <coughs> translators ready? Okay, let, we'll, try, we'll try and do this. Uh, uh, so th this is the, uh, I, the first time that I have uh, spoken to people yeah, outside the embassy uh, yeah, since little. my internet was cut off. It's a bit unusual for me to be trying to do a talk by telephone, but I like a challenge, no so we're going to try and do it. Normal para mí hablar por teléfono así, pero vamos a intentar hacerlo mejor. First of all, um, thank you to the Computers Workers Union who put this event together and organized it. No se puede, uh, I no see that quite a lot of universities are involved in Argentina, no uh, and there's some interesting. Uh, people here, it's quite quite nice to see actually such support for the free software movement and for ideals that I have uh, fought for for a long time uh, by uh, the uh, government uh, of Argentina and other institutions within Argentina. Please, Julian, give us just a minute to explain to the public here what is happening exactly. Could you give us a minute? Okay, well, Thanks. First of all, let, let me let me just introduce myself. Okay. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, my name is Julian Assange. I'm the editor, uh, founder, and publisher uh, of WikiLeaks. I have um, a technical um, training. Uh, I taught myself to program when I was 13 and became a a computer hacker or explorer of the world when I was quite young uh, from Australia uh, and then developed a lot of free software and different uh, projects and became a system administrator and started my own internet service uh, in Australia and writing uh, cryptography programs uh, to protect people uh, and their privacy from spying and spent a, wrote some books about uh, that type of thing and uh, studied uh, the National Security Agency and eventually I studied theoretical physics and decided that actually that I wanted to try and uh, bring about more education and justice in the world and that the uh, easiest way for some bueno, vamos. the democratic primary election uh, between uh, Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders principally had been rigged uh, in favor of Hillary Clinton by uh, the uh, committee uh, that runs the uh, US Democratic uh, Party uh, in many different ways, including uh, pushing out uh, fake stories that uh, Bernie Sanders supporters were trying to organize violence uh, making sure that more of the money went to Hillary Clinton and so on. When we released the, those 20,000 emails, we uh, did it in a way which we've become famous for, which is to make a, a special customized search engine uh, to search them. It's actually uh, quite hard to make a, a search engine to display uh, and search through email because there's so many broken uh, mail uh, standards and mail programs, so it, it's quite a lot of work, uh, and it encouraged uh, all the people in the United States and some outside the United States who were interested in the election to uh, sort through them. So this uh, punched a hole in the media censorship uh, that exists in the United States where uh, four of the five top TV networks and about uh, eight of the uh, nine major publications in the United States are biased in favor of Hillary Clinton. So in response, there was many attacks uh, and the uh, US 
DC establishment, which is believes that Hillary Clinton will be the winner of the election, uh, tried to find different ways to distract from our publication. Uh, they, first of all, uh, tried to say uh, that we supported Donald Trump just because we were criticizing uh, Hillary Clinton. Uh, then they tried to say that actually we were secretly working with Russia uh, to uh, publish uh, this material that was criticizing her and this was some kind of cyber warfare uh, against the United States. But I have learned from a lot of experience that the best way to deal with these attacks uh, is that you never flinch, uh, you never blink, uh, you just keep on publishing because every day that you publish uh, is a day that you have the initiative in the conflict. So we continued on publishing uh, uh, the emails of Hillary Clinton's uh, chief campaign manager, uh, which are even more politically interesting than the, the emails of the uh, Democratic National uh, Committee. I had been exploring uh, what was the connection between uh, Hillary Clinton uh, and her campaign manager and the sale of 20% of all the U.S. uranium uh, to Russia uh, through a uh, uh, company in the United States called Jewel Limited. And that was very interesting and we showed that, uh, that uh, Clinton's campaign manager had been lying about his investments uh, in this nuclear uh, energy company and he was very closely connected with a big uh, Canadian mining mag magnate and that he had, uh, had 75,000 shares in his company and then he moves it into a, another company secretly controlled by his daughter and so on. But much more important was that, that in the investigation uh, uh, we managed to get hold of uh, uh, more than 50,000 uh, emails related to uh, Hillary Clinton's chief campaign manager, John Podesta. So this time we started a, a different strategy, uh, which was to uh, write an algorithm uh, called the Stochastic Terminator, uh, which is designed uh, to be unpredictable and to adjust how much it publishes and what it selects uh, based upon what uh, we as human beings suggest to it, but also based upon what it reads in the news. And so it selects uh, the emails to be published and publishes them each day, uh, and we started doing that on the 7th of October. And uh, this really whipped up a raised hornet's nest atmosphere in the Hillary Clinton campaign uh, in, and in all the establishments that are backing her. Uh, now, we always had the analysis that Hillary Clinton will win for sure. We've had that analysis uh, from more than 12 months ago. But she has pulled around her every single establishment in the US, the intelligence agencies, uh, the neoconservatives who started uh, the Iraq war, the weapons manufacturers, uh, the big banks uh, and investment companies uh, like uh, Goldman Sachs, uh, most of the middle class uh, and most uh, of the media. And so now uh, we have all these people, all these establishments trying to uh, defend Hillary Clinton uh, from being exposed as having many corrupt relationships. So they started attacking uh, our servers with denial of service attacks and attempted uh, hacking attacks. Uh, there was a, uh, and there, there is a amazing ongoing uh, campaign uh, where fake documents were put uh, in the UN uh, and in the British courts, 
uh, to accuse me of being both a Russian spy and a uh, pedophile and a, a molester of children. You can look up that um, amazing story that we tracked down uh, uh, how this um, uh, hoax was made uh, at the UN uh, and in the British courts to call me a Russian spy and a pedophile uh, by a French company uh, in the United States, in Texas, uh, called Todd and Claire. But that wasn't enough. Uh, so the pressure started to increase uh, and started to pressure Ecuador, uh, uh, which some of the opposition parties in Ecuador were sympathetic to, perhaps because of their relationships uh, with the United States, and pressure uh, or pre statements made to Ecuador at the political level uh, and at the intelligence level uh, that I needed uh, to be stopped or there would be consequences. But um, WikiLeaks is a global publisher, publishes a million documents a year. Uh, we publish from France, uh, Germany, uh, uh, several, uh, Nor Norway, uh, Holland, and several other countries, and we have uh, most of our lawyers and staff uh, in the EU uh, and the United States. We don't publish uh, from Ecuador, um, no particular reason, just uh, the bandwidth uh, is cheaper and the servers are cheaper uh, in Europe uh, rather than in Ecuador. So the United States and Hillary, United States government in the form of uh, John Kerry, the uh, Secretary of State, uh, and some other US officials and the Hillary Clinton campaign uh, kept uh, putting forth propaganda to say that our publications revealing various forms of uh, uh, corruption uh, and scandal within uh, Hillary Clinton's uh, network was in fact uh, interference uh, in the United States electoral process. But this is not interference in the electoral process. This is the definition of the electoral process is for media organizations and in fact everyone uh, to publish the truth uh, and their opinion uh, about what is occurring. There cannot be a free and informed election unless people are free to inform. So you basically have the Obama administration taking control of parts of the government and using the government to try and shut down uh, critical true information being revealed and analyzed by WikiLeaks, uh, uh, being read by the American population. So now let's look at it from Ecuador's point of view. Um, while I disagree uh, that they didn't give uh, me any notice uh, ab about what was occurring. I, dis I did not like uh, the, the how it was done. Uh, I am very sympathetic as to the concern that the Ecuadorian state had. Ecuador, like uh, most states that are not empires, has a policy uh, of non-intervention uh, in the interior processes, including elections, uh, of other states. Now, it makes perfect strategic sense uh, while, why small states uh, should have such a policy, because if they do not have such a policy, larger states can use that as the excuse to intervene uh, in their affairs or their elections. So here we have uh, a dilemma. On the one hand, WikiLeaks is a publisher that doesn't publish from Ecuador, and it is a publisher. Its duty and its obligation is to publish everything uh, that is true, that it can get its hands on uh, about 
uh, a very important uh, election that is occurring right now in the United States. On the other hand, the uh, big TV networks in the United States, which, with the exception of Fox, are controlled by uh, Clinton uh, supporters and the uh, U.S. intelligence establishment, which is also uh, aligned uh, to Clinton, uh, pushing statements before the public that WikiLeaks publishing about the U.S. election is interference in the U.S. election, which is false, but nonetheless it is a claim that has been made very loudly in the U.S. And this claim, although false, could be used to legitimize uh, the United States uh, interfering uh, in Ecuador's uh, election uh, next year. Now, of course, we actually publish from Germany, France, uh, Holland, uh, Norway, and so on. Uh, the United States has, as far as we're aware, not tried to apply significant uh, country pressure to those countries. But uh, I am a symbol as the ideological leader uh, of WikiLeaks, and that symbol uh, is being uh, protected as a political refugee uh, by the state of Ecuador. So they think they can go after the symbol and they think they can bully uh, or try to bully uh, Ecuador uh, because uh, it is a, a state in Latin America uh, that's not the size of Brazil. So we end up with a strategic uh, position by Ecuador uh, that uh, the internet, the embassy is shut off until the end of uh, the election uh, so that Ecuador's policy of non-intervention can't be misinterpreted uh, by uh, actors in the United States uh, and even uh, domestically in Ecuador. Uh, of course, I don't agree with it, but I understand it. Uh, and Ecuador has been uh, strong in uh, many other ways, giving the asylum in the first place, uh, and also uh, continuing to resist uh, quite strong pressure uh, from uh, the United Kingdom, the United States, and uh, Sweden uh, to cast me out into the street to be arrested. And if I just compare uh, the so what the government's position is, uh, about half the opposition party uh, to be going into the Ecuadorian election next year in February say that they also uh, will protect Dharma asylum. Uh, but about another half don't campaign as a campaign commitment. Uh, they will uh, hand me over uh, to be arrested uh, despite the United Nations in February this year, making a formal finding uh, that uh, I am legally uh, correct and I am being uh, illegally detained by the United Kingdom. But WikiLeaks is a, uh, you know, you could ask what type of dog is a different uh, company or organization, uh, and WikiLeaks is one of these fighting dogs uh, that has a lot of energy and runs around fighting all the time. It is built to fight. It loves nothing more than to fight. And so uh, when uh, my internet was cut off, of course, we had long ago made uh, strategic contingency plans for exactly the situation. Uh, so uh, despite uh, uh, bombs raining down uh, on us uh, from statements by high US officials, media and so on, um, this, this is exactly the sort of situation uh, that we enjoy, uh, and so there was not even uh, a one day's pause, uh, we just continued on publishing uh, the next day, even though uh, I was cut off uh, from my team. Okay, so that's, we're up to date in the story. Now, I, any questions? Para nuestro equipo técnico que hizo el imposible para sacarlo. Uh, as, as I said, that it is 
long been our analysis that Hillary Clinton will win the election because she has all the establishments on her side, and we can see that in terms of polling, uh, if someone like Donald Trump, who has a great many problems, I'm sure all of you are aware of it, uh, but if he uh, managed to uh, get up near the 48-50% level uh, of uh, the polling, which he has on just uh, two occasions across the different polls, uh, United, then immediately uh, those big media networks uh, and the funders uh, get together and uh, smash uh, him back down. So I, I don't think there's any um, any chance uh, of Donald Trump winning the election. Uh, that, that would probably be bad inside the United States. It would probably be good outside the United States. Uh, but um, it, even with uh, the amazing uh, material that we are publishing and will continue to publish. Uh, because even though we publish it and there's a lot of people on the internet reading it directly, uh, the, uh, most of the media organizations in the United States are very strongly aligned uh, with uh, Hillary Clinton. Uh, for two reasons, really. A lot of them are owned by big businesses, which are owned by banks, uh, which are lied to Hillary Clinton, and the other is a, a class reason. Uh, most uh, journalists and media workers are very middle class, uh, and Donald Trump uh, represents, uh, in their mind, uh, white trash. And so to be uh, doing anything that looks like it might support Donald Trump, uh, looks like you're supporting the trash, uh, and that means to those um, rivals that they have uh, within their class uh, that they uh, are white trash. And so it lower, lowers their social status, and that's a very dangerous thing to do in an institution is to have your so social status lowered uh, because someone else might get uh, your job uh, or the job that you want to have with the institution. So there's a lot of conformity and a lot of fear uh, about criticizing Hillary Clinton in any way at all. So it reduces the uh, impact of even very significant material that is released. But what is the uh, impact for Latin America? Well, I think it's extremely positive uh, because I think that this is the first time uh, in US uh, electoral history that we can see uh, the power structure uh, going into the new presidency. So the, the various alliances and forces and influences uh, of Hillary Clinton and her team uh, we are exposing day by day. Uh, and so that's going to shift understanding of the phenomenon that then everyone has to deal with inside the United States and out. Uh, it becomes more predictable, uh, and also uh, the worst excesses of it are easier to contain. As a uh, security expert or former security expert uh, and someone who's had to continue to understand that in order to uh, protect WikiLeaks uh, and our sources, uh, I think electronic voting is completely crazy. Uh, the electronic aspect of it, even if there is cryptography, maybe especially if there is cryptography, uh, makes it so complex that individual peoples and communities can't assess whether it is doing what it says that it's doing. And so it becomes easy to manipulate. Now, even if there are rules to have sophisticated auditors uh, uh, external auditors auditing what has been done with random checks and so on. We all know the reality that once those rules are set up uh, for auditors, gradually they are uh, defunded or the auditors get lazy uh, and they gradually start to disappear uh, and those people who want to manipulate the system understand the abilities uh, and limitations uh, of the auditors more and more time goes by. So I think electronic voting is completely crazy uh, for national elections.
perhaps for some other things it might be all right, but national legislation, where there's real power involved, uh, I think it, um, this is mad. On the second part of that question about overseas uh, processing uh, data in the United States and elsewhere, uh, obviously information, if it's in US, US jurisdiction, uh, is accessible uh, to US authorities. Um, however, that said, uh, it might even be more accessible if it's not US, in US jurisdiction uh, because they hack it and steal it anyway. Uh, so th this uh, issue of the breakdown in areas of jurisdiction uh, or areas of sovereignty is uh, a much broader issue uh, which is causing the, um, a disappearing of the effective borders, uh, a blending in or a merging in uh, of different states with each other. There, there's a lot of benefits to that, uh, but on the, on the other hand, it seems quite likely that the largest, most powerful uh, electronic states, like the United States, maybe like China in a few years, uh, will be able to hold and gather together uh, critically important functions of other countries. Uh, and then we'll be able to squeeze these functions, both in terms of taking data from them, but possibly more importantly, uh, in terms of uh, demanding fees uh, in uh, court cases uh, or simply uh, cutting off access. The power structures of the whole world are becoming computerized. That shouldn't be any surprise to anyone uh, in this room. Uh, and therefore we, uh, as technological uh, workers, uh, can have uh, a unique ability uh, to shape the power that is to, be, is to become and not simply be useful idiots, uh, which is how uh, uh, politicians and generals uh, and company executives think uh, of most technical workers, uh, but rather be intelligent, skilled technicians uh, that understand not just uh, about our technical labors, but understand how our technical labors interface and facilitate uh, the evolving uh, structure uh, of international civilization and, of course, uh, within our own country. Uh, now, efforts to establish our own rules uh, and our own culture in, uh, say, the, the free software uh, community uh, have produced really quite important advances. But at the same time, uh, some of those advances, like free software, are also being treated as a common uh, and gobbled up uh, by ever larger corporations like uh, Google uh, or ever more abusive mega uh, uh, government institutions like the National Security Agency, which uses Linux and free software uh, all over the place. That's nothing for us to be proud of, uh, that uh, the, the fruit of our minds is being used in that way. Uh, that's rather something to be uh, ashamed of, uh, that uh, the fruits of our mind can be taken uh, and repurposed uh, in a way uh, to make uh, the world that we live in less free uh, and less humane. So WikiLeaks is the, uh, the vision that I had for using my technical skills uh, to do something about some of these problems, uh, but there's many other uh, ways uh, in which one can do it. Uh, I think the important thing is to kind of look at what is happening in the world as the rest of the world's power structures coming into our domain um, and try and thereby exercise some uh, influence over the situation rather than seeing our domain as something that has been gobbled up uh, by these existing uh, 
power structures? It is a very important question. Uh, one of the major power elements in society, one which shapes our thinking about the problems that we have and our solutions to our problems can only be as good as clarity of our thinking, uh, is of course the media, the mass media. Uh, and we're also shifting into uh, control of social media. So why social media uh, and easy internet publishing uh, has broken through a lot of the uh, censorship uh, on behalf of uh, various establishments that the mainstream media has been performing. At the same time, there is consolidation uh, in, uh, in the owners of social media that is leading uh, to various forms of censorship. There's a, a great book that's been uh, published uh, in Argentina uh, I think it's in Argentina, it's definitely in Spanish, uh, called Wikimedia Leaks. Uh, and that is an analysis of the Latin American media uh, uh, looking at the cables that Wikileaks published showing the relationships between uh, the US State Department and the various uh, media oligarchs uh, in Latin America. Now, why did a separate book have to be published on that? Well, because obviously the Claren Group was not reporting about the Claren Group uh, and there also exists a type of truce between the different media owners and even uh, amongst journalists to not report critical information about these groups that, or individuals that you would think would be rivals uh, but they're too scared to get into a a media war with each other, so they tend to censor news that is critical uh, of the media. Now, in the uh, one of the things most remarked on uh, by our recent publication uh, about uh, the DNC uh, and Hillary Clinton's campaign uh, is how many uh, unethical uh, journalists were exposed. So, journalists who were you're checking to make sure that Hillary Clinton was, uh, sorry, or Hillary Clinton's campaign manager uh, was proving of what they wrote, uh, private parties with more than 65 uh, different journalists where they didn't report on anything that happened at the party with uh, Hillary Clinton or campaign manager John Podesta cooking together and so on. Uh, but you're right, um, uh, the full archives of the New York Times or the Clarence Group uh, or CNN uh, would make a, a very big difference uh, to people's opinion and help to understand those power networks. We did it for Sony Corporation. Sony Corporation, while it's not a news corporation, it is a media corporation. And that showed uh, very interesting things. For example, uh, that Sony tried to do a deal with UK Prime Minister David Cameron uh, at the time of the Scottish referendum in 2014 uh, to not air a TV series which uh, was pro-Scottish until after the referendum. So he met with David Cameron and that was the, the strategy letter going into that meeting. Uh, they wanted to do that uh, and what could they get from Cameron where they could get uh, tax concessions from the UK Prime Minister in exchange for killing off uh, this TV series uh, about Scotland which would increase Scottish national nationalism. So those sorts of games uh, are at play in all the big media groups. Thanks, thanks guys. Stay strong. Bye bye. Muchísimas gracias, Julian. Esperamos contar con tu participación en otro evento organizado, tal vez en un futuro.